Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today we'll read from a book titled The Evolution of a Building Complex, Louis Kahn's Salk Institute for Biological Studies by Jeffrey Kiefer, published by Artifice. Jonas Salk said, When invited to give the Louis Kahn commemorative lecture this year, I was told that I could speak on any subject of my choosing. Quite spontaneously, I suggested architecture of reality. However, as I began to reflect on this singular opportunity to pay fitting tribute to Louis Kahn, I recalled, once again, what I have long realized. Meeting and getting to know him was one of the most unexpected and significant experiences of my life. I now understand the nature of the forces that led me to him, and I am beginning to recognize that one gives meaning to chance encounters by what one chooses to do with such opportunities and by the effect that chance, in this sense, then has on one's life. In some instances, the effect is transforming, leaving us permanently altered, never again able to revert to be as we were before. The relationship with Louis Kahn had such an effect upon me and I dare say that I may also have had the same impact upon him. It was instantaneous, like love at first sight. While I went to see him merely to learn from him how one chooses an architect, the question was never answered and I discovered that it could have been answered in no other way than through the experience of our meeting. The effect is seen not only in what has uh, thus far been constructed of the Institute in San Diego, but in the master plan itself, which reflects in an architectural statement the spirit of the conversation at our first encounter. It was for me like the Big Bang, the moment when the process of evolution began, filled with promises, filled with potentiality and filled with purpose. The purpose in this instance was to serve and to celebrate the process of creativity, to form a crucible for creativity not only in the life sciences, but in the arts, the humanities and in philosophy. It was intended to be a place that would be concerned with evolving human values and human knowledge. It was to house a special library containing a collection of books reflecting the evolution of man's view of himself. It was to be a living library, a place of work for those who, in deciphering the scriptures of nature, were also contributing to the scriptures of man and the merging of the epistemology of science and of human experience. It was to be a place for exploring the laws of nature, of life and of human life, and the laws of evolution as revealed in nature and in man. It was to be a place for contemplation and of work, a place to observe and to study the workings of the mind and to guide the workings of the hand. A place of meeting and of interaction in the same discipline and between different disciplines. It was to be a place of cross-fertilization and of hybridization for the emergence of a new species of thought, of concepts and of ideas. A place that would illuminate from deep introspection and deep understanding. It was to be a place where all could bring out the best in each other. This is what Lucan and I did for each other, each from different disciplines and both joined together in a creative act. We were inseparable in our thoughts from the moment we met. Out of that relationship emerged a work of art to serve the work of science. It surged out of an international joining of artists and scientists to create something latent in both of us and was made possible by the generosity of benefactors who offered the resources and the land where all came together, perceptions, plans and people. How important were the events that led to our meeting? It defies rational explanation, and yet it all happened as if it were meant to happen, as if somehow intended. 
the existence of the Institute is now taken for granted, as if as a natural occurrence, awaiting only the propitious moment to become a manifest, to unfold. In the more than two decades since the Institute began its work, it has fulfilled its promise for creativity and excellence. It has justified itself in a great many different ways and has revealed to me, and I hope to others as well, the importance of architecture, the importance of art, and the value of an aesthetically pleasing ambience for the evocation of creativity. This is not to say that human imagination can express itself only under certain specific conditions. It is merely to say that works of art and works of science are nurtured mutually and in similar ways, and it is not coincidental that each form of creativity enhances the expression of the other. This may well be one of the rare experiments of nature, through the collaboration between artists and scientists, to establish a place for discovery, and in the many ways in which discovery is made in science, in art, in literature, in philosophy. The Institute was conceived to be such a place, conducive to enhancing the quality of its work. For this, appropriate structures and spaces were needed and were created. It was to be a living entity, responsive to the living beings who would occupy it, capable of adapting and even of evolving as necessary. It was to be responsive to change, to small and rapid changes over the short term, and to more gradual and greater changes over the long term. It was designed to allow the functional parts to be easily arranged and to be replaced at such time as use required renewal. It was planned to outlive many generations into the future. There is something perpetual in it as a living and functional entity, as if to say that it is concerned with and is the guardian of the future and of the evolutionary process itself. Louis Kahn. When Salk asked me to do the laboratories in San Diego, he said that he wanted a hundred thousand square feet of space to give to ten scientists who wanted each ten thousand square feet of space. Then he said, I would like to add one more requirement. I would like to be able to invite Picasso to the laboratories. That really electrified me. I proposed to him at the next meeting a laboratory of a hundred thousand square feet, but a meeting place which amounted to almost a hundred thousand square feet in addition. These were laid out in a manner which would suit the unmeasurable qualities, and the laboratories were dedicated entirely to measurable qualities. The contrast was between law, which is unchangeable, and rule the law of the artist, which is changeable. And he bought it. To this day, it's on the agenda as something that must be done. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.